fun? What does it mean to be, you know, kind of pro woman? What does it mean to fight for women and yeah. women's rights today? Yeah, the whole like traditional art market and how they price stuff is ridiculous. But a one way ticket to Colorado, never been here before, didn't have any friends, didn't have any family, and just left. I mean, if you had a dream to do something when you were younger and you haven't done it yet, it doesn't mean the dream is over, right? right? right. This year's Colorado Small Business Person of the Year. And now for my next number. I'm here with my guy Reed. Sam. We're here with my guy Reed on Words with the Wise today. We're about to interview him and get you guys some wisdom. So Reed, tell me about yourself. Um, I know all about you, but they don't. So what should they know about you? Um, what should they know about me? My name is Reed Silberman. Uh, I grew up in New York. I've been in Colorado since 1999. Uh, I now own this company called Ink Monster. Uh, you can check us out online, inkmonster.com. And uh, yeah, I'm living in the city of Denver, Colorado, and uh, just trying to do my part nice. you know, in the community here. Yeah, that's that's actually a perfect way to start my next question. Um, I know like being in Denver, um, the community matters to you, and you do a lot for the city. What are some things that you've done that you can tell us about? The list is long. I know. Uh, we've, it's we've been I've been here since 1999. Uh, I started the business in 2004. And uh, that was in Aspen, Colorado. So I moved from New York to Vail to Aspen uh, and then to Denver in 2008. So that's really when I started to, uh, that's when the list begins, I should say, is 2008. So we started doing a lot of concerts in the community just to like promote the brand, build brand awareness. Uh, art shows, we've been doing Sticky Situation, our art show for seven, eight years now. Uh, you know, we were doing pool parties, events, sponsoring yeah. events, but um, just doing a lot to be involved. And, and these weren't ticketed shows or events. That everything was free. Our motto for a decade with events and promotions was everything is free uh, to give back to the community that brought us business and, and helped Ink Monster grow and help us become who we are. Uh, and, you know, fast forward to 2015. We started doing an event called uh, the Sun Valley Community Block Party. So we moved to this neighborhood of Sun Valley, uh, which is a neighborhood that nobody really knows in Denver, uh, in 2012. And then we were here for a couple of years and decided to, uh, you know, this is one of the poorest neighborhoods in Denver. So we decided to kind of taper off some of those, you know, big parties that we would do and really focused on more charity work and uh, started the Community Block Party. So Denver Day's Sun Valley Community Block Party is an event we've been doing for three years and that you know gives back to the community. We give away backpacks and bicycles and school supplies and sneakers and socks and underwear. Just kids that, you know, things that kids need uh, that they don't have money for or you know going back to school, things that they need. Yeah, so not only do you create amazing products but you give back in so many amazing ways and I don't if you have not if you live in Denver and you haven't been to any monster party like I don't know what you're doing but <laughs> free everything by the way and like Redman has come to the party like I mean it's legit Aesop Ferg Ghostface Killer yeah. <laughs> Eat Nuts Del the Funky Homo Sapien uh, Naughty by Nature Rome from Sublime Man. Uh, and then tons of artists, not musicians, but, you know, muralists from all over the country have participated in these events. So we're going to rewind a little bit. Um, so I was doing a little research on you. I read that you started in Wall Street, and then you became a professional snowboarder. Amateur snowboarder, I would say. Probably professional. I, tr I tried. I tried my <laughs> best. Mostly coaching, yeah. So, uh, you know, I grew up in New York, uh, and I was just trying to find who I was. I didn't go to college. You know, I just found myself in the workplace, just doing 
whatever kind of job I could do to make money from a young age. And, okay. you know, I was a computer technician for a little while, and then I had the opportunity to uh, be a stockbroker on Wall Street. How did that happen? Uh, through my stepbrother. He was, uh, he was already in the game. Uh, he invited me to check it out, see what it was about. Uh, I became a trainee at his firm, got my Series 7 license, which is your broker's license, and uh, I did that by the time I was 19. Wow. So... How long know, were you in Wall Street? Doing until Wall Street? I was 23. Okay. Why'd you leave? It was not what I wanted in life. I didn't want that. You know, I just kind of looked around the boardroom of guys doing it, you know, who were 5, 10, 15 years older, been in the game 5, 10, 15 years longer, and, you know, I kind of had kind of a look into what my life was going to be if I stayed. Right. And I was like, this isn't for me. I walked into my boss's office, put my book on his desk, and walked out. Wow. And that was it. Just like, like that. no words were said. He nodded, I nodded. We shook hands and I walked out. Was that scary knowing that you didn't have no. a backup plan? It was like this weight lifted off my shoulders. Zero backup plan. Like just, <laughs> I felt free for the first time in a long time. Uh, and then I did some odd things. I worked in the fashion district for about six months. Uh, I was a multi-line rep for a little while. Uh, just selling brands out of a showroom. And uh, realized that this really isn't what I want either. Mm -hmm. um, I really just wanted to snowboard. What do you think took that like, realization between both, you know, in both situations? Like, what was that spark when you realized, like, just like seeing the unhappy people around you, or? I just, no, I realized that I was young. I had no ties, no bills, no family, no wife, no kids. Mm -hmm. You know, like, if I'm going to make a move in my life, now's the time. Before what society says the path of life should be. Right. You know, and I start falling in, in line with that path. Yeah. All right, well, now's the time to make a choice, and now's the time to make mistakes, now's the time to roll the dice yeah. and do whatever I want. So I quit my job, bought a one-way ticket to Colorado, never been here before, didn't have any friends, didn't have any family, and just left. Sold or gave away all my material things. How do you feel? Felt great. Felt awesome. Like, yeah. <laughs> didn't, Wait, um, you're not scared. Oh, I mean, I was petrified. <laughs> you know, like it didn't really sink in. You know, I had one suitcase. It didn't really sink in. Within two weeks, I had a job as a snowboard instructor at Beaver Creek. I had four roommates. Uh, we rented a house, and that's you know where my new life and my new life story began. Yeah. You know, next chapter in my life. That is the biggest thing I feel like a lot of people are afraid of. You know, I mean, they are probably unhappy. They see so many of people unhappy around them, but they cannot take that leap. But yeah. what's so cool is to see you here right now in this place, in your building, which is how many square feet? Uh, it's 10,000 square, 10, square feet, you know, all state of the art. You know, I just want to touch on that point before we move yeah. on. Um, you know, taking that leap of faith or doing something that's scary, you know, what holds most people back from having their dream life yeah. or, you know, doing what they want or following their passions or goals is, you know, people are afraid to step out and, and take a risk. And they're so like stuck in this mindset of I have to go through the motions of what society says, you know, like graduate high school, go to college, get a job, okay. get married, work for 40 years right. and die, right. you know, like, like and that's it. You never know until you try, right? right? Uh, things are different now. You can literally do whatever you want in life and be whoever you want and build a career and make money doing it and support yourself. All you got to do is try it. People are so afraid to fail, they don't even try. Yep. And then they fail because they don't try. And then, and then they, they wind up failing anyway or not being happy right. in life. And they spend the whole life of misery or, you know, wish I woulda. Mm -hmm. And then what are you going to say in your deathbed? Wish I woulda. I wish I woulda. What do you, you think? Know? Do you, Okay, so I know you left an unhappy situation, but you were probably making really good money. I'm yeah, assuming. decent money. So Especially like, for, you know, a kid, you know, 19, 20, 21. Right. You know, really good money. And I spent every dime having fun. Came here with zero, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> because you probably had to make up for the unfun you were having, you know, 9 to 5. But, yeah. um, or probably more. You were working probably long hours. But oh, yeah. What is, um... What is your take on like passion versus money? Follow your passion and the money will follow. Yeah. You know, okay. people think, okay, 
because we're 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 just brainwashed. We're conditioned to think, all right, what's going to make money? You know, like I said, this day and age, you can make money doing anything. Yeah. And if you're passionate about something, and you really love doing something, you will make money doing it. You know, all the things that are required to have longevity and make money. If you don't love it and you're not passionate about it. You won't do all these things. You won't be a whatever it takes kind of person. Yeah. You won't make those sacrifices. Oh well, I could make it to happy hour with my friends or work late nights. You know, do whatever it takes, um, and do whatever it takes. it takes for an extended period of time. Right. Not just a week, a month, a year. I've been doing this for 14 years. 14. So yeah. like that's that's what it takes, you know. So that's I think a misconception that a lot of us have. Um, it happens that, overnight. That well, well, that we put in the time, you know, put in the time, put in the work, build this amazing empire company, and then, and then we just back, yeah right? go to like Hawaii. I kind of thought it was gonna be like that <laughs> for a minute. So um, tell us about that. You know, the bigger this gets, the more we grow, the more pieces to the puzzle. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it doesn't get easier. Again, why you have to love what you do. Because right. as you grow, as you scale, as you get bigger, you are always going to have growing pains. There's, there's always something more we want to do. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, it all goes back to the, the beginning of this conversation. Like, what are you passionate about? And, you know, what do you love? And that's what's going to keep it going, you know, 5, 10, 20 years down the road. Right. You know? Keep you pushing. Yeah, keep you pushing. So, sacrifices. You mentioned sacrifices, and you just talked to us about one of the biggest ones you have probably made in your life, which was getting on that plane and selling everything you had to come to Colorado. Um, what are a couple other big sacrifices yeah. you, you did to get to this point right here? I wouldn't even say that was the biggest sacrifice. Really? Uh, getting on the plane. That was the biggest leap of faith. You know, that was scary, but I don't think that was, that, that wasn't even a sacrifice compared to many of the sacrifices I had to make. Um, you know, friends, I guess my, maybe my biggest one was, uh, two biggest ones, my family, because they're all back in New York, and I'm here, and, you know, I have 12 nieces and nephews, you know, eight brothers and sisters, uh, big family, and I never get to see them. Yeah. You know, so I'm missing all my nieces and nephews grow up. Uh, so that's a big one. Uh, second, I'd say is uh, you know my lady relationships. You know, all all my uh, relationships kind of suffered because of my business. You know, I'd say that one hurts the most is when uh, you know someone can't be with you because of you know, it's almost like they feel like you're you're cheating on them with your business. Right. So you know that I think I think those two family. And, and relationships were um, definitely, to me, uh, the biggest sacrifices I had to make. Have you ever found the balance? Do you think it's possible? Uh, I do think it's possible. And um, that's just maturing as a business owner, as an entrepreneur. You learn how to delegate responsibility a little bit more. You know, people take on other responsibilities. You know, entrepreneurial personalities burn out. Mm -hmm. You know, we go super hard for extended periods of time, and then it's like we just have a meltdown, shut down, you know, we're creatives, yes. not, you know, like I, I go overseas, I go surfing, and no one hears from me for like a month, and I'm just like on a beach with no Wi-Fi, and <laughs> you know, I got my surfboard and, and, a, and a smoothie, and you know, that's it, that's right? And I write, and I reflect, and you know, recharge the batteries, but um, you, you learn how to incorporate balance in your life. So I literally have to force myself to create more balance. What are some, for like an entrepreneur who is consumed by their work 24-7 like myself and probably like yourself, what yeah. are some things that you do to balance yourself out? Um, I read. I write. I think writing helps a lot. Yeah. You know, and, and again, uh, when I travel, that gives me time for reflection. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that's really important because we're so wrapped up in where we're at. Yeah. The stress, the bills, payroll, you know, like selling new jobs, staying creative, staying inspired. Um, it's very easy to forget how you got here. It's very easy to forget what you've built. Yeah. I literally started this business living in my van. And uh, look where we're at now. Yeah. You know, look at all the people we've met. Look at all the people I've influenced and... 
you know, creatives we've worked with and experiences I've, I've, I've had or have gotten to have, uh, you know, places I've gotten to go around the world. And, and uh, you know, then, you're, then things come into perspective. Yeah. And you're like, oh, you know, no matter what is going on, what I'm stressed out about, it's like, we'll get through this. Yeah. It's a good thing, but it's also like, it's hard, you know, we forget to like sit back and reflect or even just to appreciate like how far we come. I know I do. I like never acknowledge it or never feel like it's good enough yet, you know? Well, because you have that drive, you have that motivation, that vision, that long-term goal, like you're not just trying to get to where you're at. Your goal right. is way, way past that, exactly. right? You know, people look at what we've done here and they're like, you've made it. Exactly. You're a success story. Yeah. I'm like, I haven't made shit. Right. Like, I, I am not, this is just the beginning. Exactly. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Like, I have so much more I want to accomplish and so much more I want to do and so many more goals that I have. Yeah. You know, I look at a person like yourself the same way. You're, you're like, I'm not happy where I'm at. You know, I remember when you first started too. We know each other a long time, yeah. right? Like, it's cool. and it's it's not just being creative because there are certain people who are creative, and certain people who are creative and know how to uh, make a business out of their creativity and make a living out of it, yeah. where they puts food on the table and it pays bills. Most artists can't do that, and it's unique. And when I met you, I, I saw that. I'm like, this girl, she's got the creative. And she knows how to, you know, monetize it, you know, like that's make awesome. a business out of it. And, and that's super rare. So, What's so you know. cool about that? And thank you. Um, but like, I didn't know how. And I'm like just forcing myself to learn right now. Yeah, maybe I didn't. Like, maybe you didn't, but... I'm a hustler. But, but your brain works that way. Yeah, it does. You know, I, I, I didn't know if I knew how. I didn't know if I could build a business. Right. But you learn as you go. But if, you, if your brain works that way, you know, you figure it out as you go. Yeah. You know, like... I didn't know how to print. I didn't know how to design. I don't. I didn't go to school for any of this stuff. Um, all self-taught. All self-taught, hundred percent. Was I afraid to try? Was I afraid to fail and take risk? No, absolutely not. Because what's the worst that can happen? Right. What's really the worst that can happen? You know what I think the worst that could have happened is you being unhappy in Wall Street right now. That is worse than me, you know, failing at this. Right. Because I think the worst thing is, you know, not trying and always wondering if you could have. So you mentioned you lived out of your van <coughs> when you first started Ink Monster. How was that? Yeah. Tell us, like, I mean, that's crazy. What did you do? How would you make it work? It sounds crazy. I didn't think it was so crazy because I had a, I had a, a goal in mind. I had a purpose for it. I intentionally moved into my van. Mm -hmm. So... Um, one of the ways I made money as a snowboarder was coaching. So I got a job at uh, the Aspen Snowboard Club. Mm -hmm. You know, I was a team coach for the Aspen Snowboard team. Um, it was awesome, but Aspen's a very expensive place to live, and it just so happened that I knew that this was the business I wanted to start. You know, one thing, I, a commitment I made to myself when I left being, uh, when I when I left Wall Street was um, I'll never take a job again for the money. I was so money hungry from such a young age because we grew up poor, we had nothing, you know, I, all my friends had everything, but you know, so money was my main purpose in life up until I quit Wall Street. I'll never take a job again just for the money. It's gotta be because I love it. So I moved into my van intentionally. I flew back to New York. I didn't have a van yet. Um, I, I pitched this to my family. I'm like, this is what I want to do. Uh, not that they had to say. Mm -hmm. I was just letting them know what I wanted to do. Right. And I, I searched the internet, found a van in Jersey, bought it. My stepdad and I gutted it, built it to live in, and started going to work. Wow. You know, got my uh, my business registered and started making money. Yeah. And the Boulder, I was coaching the CU snowboard team, college mm -hmm. snowboard team. Yeah, then eventually 2008, moved to Denver and had my first commercial property. Pretty, that, that was a, a real scary move because uh, I rented a big warehouse, couldn't afford it, way too big for me. Uh, we didn't need that much space, but I knew I needed to be in Denver. Mm -hmm. I needed to be in a metro area because I just needed more customers. I needed to 
do more. So you can Make imagine like just making it work. Yeah. Whatever it takes. Whatever. Right? Like those are gonna be our words of this. <laughs> for real. Like that's what I'm so glad to like pull that out. It's like you literally gotta do whatever it takes, and you gotta make it work. Like I feel like a lot of us can relate. Like a lot of us have had, you know, like still to this day, you know, apartments that have like a whole workspace in their living room, or there's no living room. It's a workspace, you know, like or the kitchen or whatever. So that's really it. Always cool. spills over into the kitchen somehow. <laughs> somehow, <laughs> some way. I mean, once again, you gotta do whatever. So, um, so yeah. all this and. I just read that you were Denver's Small Business of the Year in 2016. Uh, it's Colorado State. Colorado State. So, like, uh, yeah, Colorado State Small Business Person of the Year. How does that feel? Uh, feels good. I mean, how could it not feel good? Yeah. Um, did, it, did you take a second to be like, did, okay, was there ever a moment where you were like, wow, like, I did it? No. Not yet? No. Good. Uh, ambitious. It's nice. I'm, it's great, yeah. you know, to to say that out of all the businesses nominated in the whole state of Colorado, not just Denver or Boulder or Colorado Springs or Fort Collins, like the whole entire state, right. you know, uh, there's a lot of businesses nominated for this award. You know, Small Business Person of the Year for the entire state is a huge, huge accolade and accomplishment and achievement. It's just an award. Awards don't put food on the table. Mm -hmm. You know, awards don't drive sales the way you think they, you know, you really just gotta, you can't let off the gas because you won an award. Right. Uh, you know, I'm not trying to boast, but Ink Monster has been winning awards since 2012, every single year. Wow. And, and that's all great. Yeah. But, you know, people win something or they get, you know, a pat on the back and they're like, they kick their feet up and I made it. Right. You better put your feet down because you're going to go out of business real fast. Yeah. Or because there's always a target on your back. The bigger you are, you know, the more you're in the public eye, yeah. you constantly got to stay on the gas. Yes. There is no "I made it," "I've arrived," "I can chill." <laughs> you know, you, if you want to continue to grow, you got to keep pushing no matter what, and not let that let that get to your head, um, or you lose your edge. Right. Yes, I'm proud and I'm honored. I'm grateful. I'm blessed. You know, um, but it's just, it's just an award, it's just an award. you know. I like that. I really, really like that. It's cool. Um, who are the top three companies you've worked with that, in your opinion, your favorite? My favorite? Yep. No, so not like the biggest no. companies. It's like my favorite company. We talk about Red Bull a lot, and they're a big company, and uh, I mention them in a lot of interviews and articles, and they're all over our website, and, you know, I, 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 I hate continuously bringing them up because you're not getting paid for it <laughs> well no it's just, just people like oh like they're they're so big i'm using that as a marketing tool yeah. but they've allowed us to do some really really creative projects because their marketing is really creative mm -hmm. we've gotten to wrap helicopters you know 100 foot building wraps you know like sides of buildings you know not just in colorado but in the country so yeah i'd say that's one of them um, what I what I really enjoy, I think, the most is some of the uh, the artists that we get to work with. You know, they don't make us a ton of money. Just working with other artists and not big corporations is really cool because you know we see and get to collaborate and see things from their perspective. Ponder Monster, you know, Ponder Monster, he's a local artist. Naomi Haverland is a, a local chalk artist uh, that we got to do a 30 foot tall. Uh, building wrap in 16th Street Mall. Yeah, uh, I think yeah, you're familiar with that about. piece. So yeah. that was, you know, we worked with arts and venues on that one. And yeah, that's the beauty of this job is, and that's part of the reason why I got into it because you can work with everybody. What we do, everybody needs something that we have, either one product or ten. Right. Like everybody can use what we have. Mm -hmm. It's just really cool. It, it opens doors that. You know, I never would have had otherwise. Yeah. So I know, like this. Speaking of the doors, so like the Red Man door. Um, yeah. Is that what built yeah. this from this? Uh, that relationship came out of, you know, me just, you know, the concerts I was throwing. You know, growing up in New York, I'm a hip hop head. Mm -hmm. I love hip hop. I love fashion. I love all art, like all these different things. So I was like, I got the money. Why not? Book Redman. So we booked him. 
uh, still to this day, one of the best shows we ever threw, um, and he's been my big bro ever since. We we just bonded. So with all that being said, <laughs> <laughs> so much great stuff. Um, what are two of your personal biggest accomplishments? It's a good question. You know, part of me wants to say that it hasn't happened yet. I can see um, that. But if I had to pick something, yeah. Uh, I would say I would say small business person of the year was one of them. Wow. Even though I downplayed it before, <laughs> uh, it's a huge accomplishment. It is. And you know, starting a business, living in your van, you know, following your dreams, not worrying about the outcome, not worrying about you know how much money I'm going to make. It was. Uh, it was pretty cool to, to get that award was a milestone in, in my career. This building is another one because what I had to do and the sacrifices and the stress to, to get this building and fund it and stay in business after that and then continue to support the overhead of this place and, and grow the business in this facility uh, was a huge struggle the first couple of years after moving in. Um, so just getting this property was a huge accomplishment. I would say I would say getting balance in my life is what I'm really happy about and feel accomplished about. Try and live my life as well outside of work and get more balance is something that I'm proud of because you know nobody on their deathbed says I wish I would have worked more. Right. You know. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah, I think I think just finding a little bit more happiness on on both ends of the scale is, is a huge accomplishment. Yeah, that is. Well, this is so cool. We gotta like see living proof that like from <laughs> Wall Street to prof or to snowboarding yeah, to yeah. to living in your van to this like it's possible. And so, thank you very much for letting us uh, letting them see that. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for thanks for talking with me. I mean, it's a it's an honor to. Just have somebody who wants to hear my story, somebody like yourself, because, you know, I know you have a similar story, so, you know, I appreciate you. Yeah, I appreciate you. Thank you. <laughs>